So we have this extraordinary precision between mathematics on the macroscopic level with neutron stars and at the microscopic level with the nature of the electron. And mathematics is incredibly precise in both cases. So what does that now begin to tell us about what mathematics really is? Yes, well, in a sense, this is telling us that, that our picture of physical reality depends on something, in a sense, which is more precise, at least in our understanding of it, than, than, than how we think about the world. And this precision really dates back to the ancient Greeks, the time of Pythagoras and later, where they developed the uh, mathematical ideas as a field of study, stimulated to some degree by physical reality, because the geometry of Euclid, which uh, was very much part of the mathematics that was being studied then, which we know now know isn't extraordinarily precise. I mean, it is extraordinarily precise, but it's not as precise as Einstein's theory. So we, one has to go a little bit beyond the uh, geometry that they had. I don't think they quite appreciated that they were doing physics, because they <laughs> didn't realize that the geometry of the world could have been anything else. But they developed this mathematical scheme purely as, as a study on its own. And so mathematics was studied as a pure intellectual activity. Yeah. And without necessarily it being related to the structure of a physical world, although geometry clearly was a big input. But then the properties of numbers and how you add and multiply and the notions of prime numbers, the fact there are infinitely many prime numbers that goes back to Euclid and earlier. And so uh, these things about just about numbers were developed very much from the time of the Greeks. And ever since then, mathematics has been a subject which you can study for its own sake. It has its own life in a sense. And certainly mathematicians view it this way. It's something out there which seems to have a reality independent of, of, of the reality, the ordinary kind of reality, like things like chairs and so on, which, which are what we normally think of as real. But, uh, okay, the mathematical reality is something different. It's, a, it's sometimes referred to as a platonic world, a platonic reality. And sometimes people have a lot of trouble thinking of that as real. I mean, philosophers uh, worry about that and so on. What, is that, what would that mean, a platonic reality? Well, I think uh, it's a different kind of reality from the reality of the physical world. I mean, I th tend to think of there being different ways of looking at reality. There's the reality of our mental experience, which, okay, interrelates with the reality, physical reality, but so then does the mathematical reality of this Platonic world, which gives reality to these notions. So if you like uh, mathematical facts, like there is no largest prime number, mm -hmm. is... Uh, it's something independent of ourselves. It's always been true. It doesn't, didn't some, somehow become true as soon as somebody <laughs> see, saw how to prove it. It's always been true. There are wonderful examples like the... And it would have been true if nobody if ever nobody proved been around. it. Exactly, yeah. yes. And, and in a sense, that had to be so because if the physical world depended so precisely on these mathematical laws, um, I couldn't have known what to do in a certain sense if the mathematics hadn't already been there. I mean, it, it's not us that imposes this on the world. That's, it's out there. Sometimes people think that, you know, maybe the reason we have good mathematical laws of physics is that's the best way we can come to understand the world. But it's something more than that. It really is out there in the world. Well, that's the argument. Whether mathematics is invented by us, by human beings trying to impose our way of thinking on the physical world, yeah. or whether it is discovered because it's already out there and we're finding it because it's already there. Th those are the, That's right. the two polar views. Sometimes people do argue. They say, well, you know, it's just our way of organizing the, the, what we see about us. But I really don't think that's good enough because Newton, for example, the observations probably had about three figures and three decimal places. Yeah, yeah. And he produced this theory, which kept on working until about seven figures, you see. And then there were discrepancies seen. Einstein produced his theory mostly out of his head, with uh, appealing to you know, things that were known to Galileo and so on. Um, but apart from that, uh, it, it was not much more empirical evidence. But he produced his theory, which extended far beyond anything that the observations at that time told us about. 
And they keep on agreeing with the observation. So that theory, which is, if you like, a, 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 a platonic absolute thing, I mean, it's a mathematical thing, um, seems to be inbuilt into the way the world operates. It's not as though you see a new effect and say, okay, we're not going to think of a better theory to accommodate that one. Sometimes science is like that. But these really good physical theories are not like that. You're, you're revealing something in the way the world operates, which is there all the time. And I, I don't think there's any way of understanding that just in terms of our trying to understand what we see around us. A critical fact really seems to be what you said, that, that when these, these uh, mathematical uh, theories were discovered, the accuracy that the observation that they had at the time was small compared Absolutely. to the accuracy yes. that those theories then produced. That's right. That's right. I mean, Einstein's case, okay, seven figures of decimal were known perhaps in the planetary motions. Yeah. But there's another seven out there. And this, the precision is yeah. over and above that. Is ten as million. Much as, yes. That, well, it's, ten it's, million, ten millions. It's <laughs> ten, million, ten million, ten millions. Yes, that's right. Yes, yes. I mean, that's <laughs> unbelievable. Yes, no, it's, it's incredible. So, so push it yeah. further. What, what does that mean? Because mathematics is, uh, it, 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 it's almost infinite in terms of all the different relationships and expressions and things Which that we already <laughs> know. <laughs> yes. Uh, 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 yeah. What does that mean in terms of, of how much mathematics is sitting out there? Well, that's a good point because there's an awful lot of mathematics which doesn't seem to have any clear relation to the physical world. Right. Uh, right. The way I like to picture it is there is this world of mathematics and only a small part of that, and it's a very uh, fruitful part, it's an extraordinarily fruitful part, has relevance to the physical world. Right. There's an awful lot out there which, as far as we know, has no relation to physical behavior. Well, of course, people said some of that in the past, and then we've been surprised yes. to find some that's, other things that, 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 that they later had. Happened. But still, there's so much math out there, then so much bizarre, that's right. I don't know how else to put it, structures that it would seem impossible that that could relate to the physical world. But what does that mean about if, if it is out there in some platonic world, what is out there. In other words, it, 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 all these infinite ideas and structures and possibilities. Yes. Well, sometimes people think of it, these as mental creations, you see. But it doesn't really explain. And there's this wonderful example of the Mandelbrot set. It's extraordinarily complicated. The it's fractional. The, yes. And you can magnify little bits of it and you see all this incredible uh, detail. And that's all there in a very simple uh, mathematical idea. And it's, and it's encompassed by this very simple piece of mathematics. How, how does that give your, your own sense of what mathematics really is? Well, I think there are two aspects to mathematics, at least how I look at it. Some people are just exploring the mathematics, and that's their real interest. And it's the beauty in the subject often, and that's why they're doing it, because they find it exhilarating, something they, they find really um, wonderful to do. But there's the other side of it, which is how it relates to the physical world. And there is this extraordinary precision that we find when you get the mathematics right, it really mirrors the behavior of the physical world to an unbelievable degree. And so there's these two sides to mathematics. It has this reality which you can study quite independently of its role in physics, and the other side, which is how it really does seem to reveal how the real world operates, in a certain sense, what the world is, as far as we can understand it.